Boxing Voice. All right, we're live with Ken Porter on the eve of a big fight with Kell Brook. And uh, there's some interesting news uh, circulating on some websites there. Marquez and Fernando Beltran have uh, come out and said that they're going to be live at your son's fight tomorrow night. And also that they are really interested in making a fight with the winner of Porter Brook. But they're mm-hmm. looking for that fight to land in Mexico. Now, you know, you're the manager. Why would you right. send Sean Porter to Mexico? Is fighting a legend in Marquez big enough uh, reason to, for Porter to leave his country and go to Mexico and take that chance of possibly a robbery in a hometown of a legend? And uh, is, well. the, is the name Marquez such a big name that it's worth the risk to have him on Sean Porter's resume. Well, listening to that coming from you, none of that sounds um, advantageous to Sean. Um, and obviously we want to, uh, you know, continue with having advantages when we go in the ring. It's not an advantage to go to Mexico and fight um, a former multiple-time world champion. Um I, the first I heard about it is coming from you. No one's brought that information to me at all and that he had an interest in fighting us. I did hear yesterday, but, again, first it came from you, that he was coming to the fight. Um, and as far as Beltran, doesn't he have a fight with Terrence Crawford coming up? I'm, and he's not even in our weight class. No, 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 no. Fernando Beltran is the owner of Zanford Promotions who promotes Marquez. It's always been Zanford Promotion that promotes Marquez, but they, they've always worked uh, in, you know, co-promotion with either Top Rank or Golden Boy, depending on which point of Marquez's career we're talking about. But Zanford is Marquez's promoter. Uh, that was a ha-ha, very funny, because I, I know the guy is some type of promoter or something. I just thought I'd be funny by saying he had a oh. fight coming up with Crawford. <laughs> but anyway, uh, no, all good. Anyway, all good. Um, no, there's absolutely no, um, you know, we, we we have not taken our eyes off of uh, the guy that we're looking at right now and what we got going on Saturday night. So there's, you know, no consideration for anything like that. And as you bring it to my attention right now, it definitely wouldn't be any consideration for us to uh, go across the border to uh, fight the young man over there. Um, although, you know, it is a big name. He does have a great resume. Uh, but, you know, that fight for me, um, it sounds like the MGM brand, uh, and it sounds like pay-per-view. So that would, that's where my interest would be, MGM brand, pay-per-view. Be bet. Okay. I just want to ask you one question about Kell Brook because it seems as though you've been very verbal to him. Even face-to-face, you've said things to him, try to get under his skin. Do you really not think much of him as a fighter, or are you just trying to do this to get in his head? No, I think he's a great fighter. Obviously, the record speaks for itself. But, uh, you know, just like anything else in life with me, uh, I think boxing and life mirror each other so much that, uh, you know, when you get in the ring, the ring tells the truth. And uh, there's nothing that you can hide once you get up in that ring. And so, so many of the questions that weren't answered over the 10 years of his professional career, those questions will be asking him on Saturday night. And my question, you know, to him uh, about a week ago was, you know, why? has it taken you this long to get here? You know, if you take away the fact that Sean is sitting out for 15 months on a contract dispute, he actually, you know, um, made it to the world championship in four years, not five. So it went just the way it should have gone. You know, he graduated from high school, and uh, the Olympics would be the equivalent of going to college. He finished that, and then after that, he did freshman, sophomore, uh, junior, and senior year in college, and then he graduated from that, and he became a world champion. And I'm just saying that this guy is really, really behind the learning curve, and there's a lot of questions that need to be answered, and we're going to ask him questions on Saturday night and see if he has the answers. And, I mean, there's a lot of questions. It's not like one or two questions over a 10-year period of time that you haven't you know, gotten to this point. There's a lot of questions. 
Now, Ken, stick stick into that topic, right? Um, last night, of course, we had our, our our radio show, and we got an extra amount of UK callers calling the land, calling in, and defending Brooke. Um, the problem is there's a misconception and, and and lack of information on your son. So, can you just take this time to enlighten? Uh, whatever fans, may that be from the U.S. or U- U.K. or around the world, that Sean is not an athlete-turned-boxer. He's always been a boxer. He's always boxed and played other sports. There's a there's a misconception that he was a football player, then he turned into this boxer, and there's also the huge misconception of the power. I believe that the power is starting to develop because – He's come down from such a high weight, finally made it to the weight that you guys feel is best for him, so he's fitting into that division the way that he should after a person gets settled into a division after skipping two because he started in the amateurs at 165, right? Correct. And now he's at 147, uh, so clearly the the weight differential is going to add some power because – you know, there's clearly you've heard the speculation and people are making comments and et cetera, et cetera, about this newfound power, but I, I just don't think that it works that way. It's nothing newfound. It's just he's at the weight that he belongs at. Yeah. You know, um, I'm smiling right now about all the things that you just said because uh, any mis- misconceptions that anyone has about him, uh, I want them to have them if they're – you know, if they come to their own conclusions, their own thoughts, whatever that might be, I want you to have that because, as Sean said the other day, um, you know, uh, someone asked him about himself, and he said, I'm not statistical. You can't use statistics to describe what you're dealing with when you see me in the ring. So with that being the case, um, you know, Sean started boxing at four years of age. Uh, he was sparring by the time he, before he was five years old, he had already had his first sparring session. Uh, he was playing football, which we're talking about uh, flag, at six. And he was starting in equipment football by the time he was seven. He wasn't legally allowed to start until he was eight. But, you know, we moved some things around and we knew the coach and we got him in there. Uh, he has boxed played football, ran track, and played basketball, all of those sports his his entire life since he was very small, since he was ever ever able to compete. And he never had an injury in any of those sports, so he was able to do that his whole entire life. When he was, uh, let's see, I want to say, I looked up the information the other day. When he was 14 years old, he received a plaque from USA Boxing saying he had won 100 fights. That was the same year that Paulie Malignaggi saw um, Kevin Kelly versus Prince Hamed and said he wanted to box. That's the same year Paulie got started. Sean had already received the plaque saying he had won 100 fights at that point. Uh, We're talking about... Uh, at 145 pounds, Julian Olympics at 14 years of age, state, region, and uh, national, knocked out everyone he fought. Returned the next year at 15, state, region, and national, knocked out everyone again. At this point, he's not an open division fighter, but he's now a, uh, a freshman on the high school football team uh, playing starting varsity, a defensive back. Before the mid, before the middle of the season is over, he's starting at run, started at running back. So what's happening now is his body is changing, and he's making it change because he wants to be a great football player. So by the sophomore year in uh, high school football, Sean is now playing football at 170 pounds. He needs that weight to run. You know, he needs the weight to run the ball. So what was happening was when the football season would end, you know, he's 170, 175 pounds. He's not watching what he's eating or anything like that. I never wanted Sean to go on some kind of crash diet. I didn't have the education or the information to bring it down the right way. I didn't want him to be unhappy. I wanted him to be a kid that was happy and playing sports and enjoying himself. So I let him box at the weight he came in at. He would come in at 165. 
and he did well at 165. He was very strong. He was extremely quick, extremely fast. And, of course, he had over 100 wins back in the month. So he did well against all of those guys in those national tournaments. But after boxing, after football was over, and we didn't have to have that wait year, you know, year round in the fall to to perform on the football field, it was time to start leaning his body out and bring him to a weight where he could fight at, and you know, not have a disadvantage. So we brought him down to 154. The first professional fight. Coming down to 54, the guy doesn't show up. We have to get a replacement fighter, and they weigh in on the day of the fight, and they say, hey, we need Sean to weigh in a little heavier than 54. I think he was 156, and we need him to weigh in a little heavier than 54. And you know how things go in boxing. You know, they put it up on the box rack. I think they said he weighed 165 pounds or something. He didn't, but, you know, after that, competing at 154, uh, became uh, a fight, uh, became a, a weight that he was making so easily that we considered, okay, if you're making 54 so easily, let's consider going to 47. And we worked on that and we changed his lifestyle and we changed his eating habits and we changed everything and we got more information and we got more education and we tried and we effort, you know, put all the different things on the table that you can to see which, you know, um, calculation will work. And over a period of time, he's been able to do it, lean his body out, and maintain his strength. But along the way, as you said, it will fight specific things that he had to change to because coming down in weight, he wasn't as strong as he was in higher end weight class. And we didn't know how his body was going to feel in later rounds being that light. So it's been a, a, a growth process. I call it addition by subtraction. The more weight he lost, the more money he made. <laughs> the more popular he became in boxing and the better he, um, you know, has become as far as uh, the weight class that he's in that brings the most attention to him, which is what's weight. So he's been a boxer. He's been a football player. He's been a outstanding athlete and outstanding person and a great student in school his entire life. This is just a culmination of all of those things coming together. He works extremely hard. He prays every day, and he gives everything he can in the ring. So it's just a culmination of that. And over the period of time, his body has settled in there. He woke up this morning. They had a weigh-in. He's just laying in the bed right now. I weighed him. He's 147 pounds. No problems. None whatsoever. Well, Ken, you said that, you know, you mentioned it took Cal Brook 10 years to get here. Do you think that kind of represents that there's doubt in their minds, his team has doubt in their minds about him? And when you look into his eyes, you see a doubt. You see any doubt. Are you asking me if I look in Cal's eyes and see any doubt? Yeah. Actually, I've never looked in Cal's eyes. Uh, I haven't been that interested in him um, to look in his eyes, really and honestly. And anybody, and you know, everyone has their own way of doing things. I don't go with the intimidation thing and all that kind of stuff like that. You know, I'm not saying what I'm saying to get under somebody's skin or anything like that. If anything, I'm saying it to open the thought process of my fighter. Listen, you've been doing this and you did this, and this guy wasn't able to do this. And there's a reason why he wasn't able to do it, and you have to exploit that, you know. Uh, I know for a fact that, you know, when they got up and did a little stare down yesterday, Sean looked into his eyes, and Sean told me, um, you know what, this guy is not going to distance. That's the belief I have in my fighter. When he says that to me, I believe in what he said. Uh, so we don't expect it to go to distance, and if it does, he's going to be punished. But, uh, you know, any doubt that he may have, which, you know, everyone that gets in that ring should answer all the questions that they have before they get to the ring. If he's in any doubts about anything, we're going to exploit them. Now, one, now one last Ken, uh, move, moving forward, uh, sticking to the same topic again, but uh, people are using now the comparison between yourself and Angel Garcia. 
Some people, like myself, enjoy it. I, I, I am here to be entertained. I don't have anything against Andre Ward, but, you know, I rather a guy that's more outspoken, especially the way that you did last week in Vegas where you were just speaking your mind, cameras were rolling. People right. think people think now that the approach that yourself and Angel Garcia are taking is to build your fighter up. That, that you're, you're that you're acting out because you want to build Porter up, and that Angel's acting out because he wants to build Danny up into something uh, that we don't know he is yet. Um, but is this genuine? Is it organic when it happens for you? Uh, yeah. Are you just no. saying? Nah, nah, for me, it's, this is the way I've always been. I've always been this way. Um, you know, and Sean knows that. Um, my other son, Kenny, he's more outspoken like I am. We're going to say how we feel. Um, the split second, we're done saying it, we're ready to fight. That's who we are, you know what I mean? We really don't really even want to talk about it. We really want to get at it, you know what I mean? So when I say, you know, I'm catching pads with Sean, and somebody say, oh, you did that pretty good, your hands look good. I say, yeah, I'm knocking out all trainers. I mean that from my heart. Let a trainer step to me. I don't care who it is, he will get knocked out, okay? And so, you know, as you got people like, uh, for example, you got Floyd Mayweather Jr., who's, has to consider everything that have everything that goes on before you get in the ring with somebody, you know, because it might amount to you losing money or it might amount to you losing a fight. We don't care about that. We're not concerned about oh we're gonna lose a fight. We're not concerned about are we gonna lose money. That's not our concern. Our concern is the guy that's in front of us. So that's as genuine as you can possibly get, point blank and simple. If Alexander had been able to beat us, I would have said, do it again on next Saturday night. You know what I mean? That's the only thing I'm looking at. That's the only thing I'm concerned with. It doesn't matter if you're able to beat us. We're not worried or concerned. That's not a concern or consideration. We know, for example, I say you look at uh, you look at Hearns, Sugar Ray Leonard, you look at Duran, and you look at Marvin, uh, Marvin Hagler, they – were great fighters, but they were great fighters because they fought each other and made each other great. I want my son to be great. He buys into what I'm selling. He wants to be great. So we want to fight Keith Thurman. We want to fight Manny Pacquiao. We want to fight Floyd Mayweather Jr. We want to be great. Do they want to be great? I don't know if they want to be great. I know that Keith wants to be great because I know Keith personally. I know Keith's heart. I've been with Keith numerous occasions. He wants to be great. So what I say is exactly what I feel. And the way I feel it, I really would like to feel it, you know, in the ring. I don't really want to talk about it. It's not something we really want to talk about. We wanted to get here sooner than yesterday. We want Saturday to be here today. We want today to be the fight night. You know what I mean? Because that's what we uh, are here for. So, you know, it's not, you know, however Angel goes about doing whatever he does, I know Angel from the amateurs. I never heard a peep out of him. But that's Angel. I heard him from the amateur. I knew him from the amateur. I never heard a peep out of him. Not, not one word. That's Angel. If anybody go back and take a look at me in any fight that you've seen Sean in as a professional and as an amateur, you go back, you can go back and look at my kid. When my kid's feet don't touch the floor, I'm jumping around the ring, imposing my will in him, and he's imposing his will on that fighter, whoever that was in that ring. That's who we are. So this is exactly what we do because this is the way we work. This is how we do it. There's nothing that's dreamed up or thought about or schemed up or, you know, this is reality, and I don't want nobody coming in doing a reality TV show because I don't want people that close to me. But fight night, this is when we get a chance to perform and give everything we got. And I ask these things of my fighter. I ask him. It may sound like I'm talking to Kel, but I'm asking my fighter, why have you been here? Why has he been here for 10 years and hasn't done this? Ask him those questions on fight night. Ask him those questions. Make sure you go to him and you physically ask him those questions on fight night. So there's a lot of things going on that build up to that fight that I use to prepare my fighter for the fight. And a big part of that is the mental part. So people can film it. They can blog and say what they think or however they think about it. It doesn't matter. Our thing is, getting in there and giving it everything we got. So I give him everything I got, he gives me everything he got, and we're happy with that. 
I got one last question for you, Ken. I, and obviously, it's slightly. How's the atmosphere been down there? I mean, obviously, Cal Brook's going to bring a lot of his contingency over from the UK. Come fight night, how do you anticipate that arena being? Do you think it's going to be 50-50 crowd, uh, you know, reception for you know half for Sean, half for him, or do you think that you'll have the overwhelming fan support come fight night? I think we'll have an overwhelming fan support, but. You know, I've been to that venue a half a dozen times, and I love the venue. We never fought there, but the excitement, the electricity at the venue, uh, Oscar's now calling it the Thunderdome. It's a lot like that. I don't know if you've been there, but it's great on fight night. Uh, so I think we'll have, you know, that kind of great support. But I also believe at the same time, you know, um, the, the people that come to see him, that are uh, the people that come that support uh, tail, they will find out that now they're going to have to support somebody that beat their guy, you know, because if they're real fight fans, whether they like it or not, they got to respect it, that the guy that came in there and beat their guy and showed that their guy wasn't everything they thought they was is the better man, and now you got to tip your hat to him. Now, Ken, uh, earlier, earlier you mentioned that um, – Basically, you alluded to resume not necessarily being the reason that you feel the way you feel about Kel Brook. Um, but taking that into consideration, if Sean goes in there and puts on the same type of performance that he did with Malinaji and Alexander, do you feel that your son is going to get the credit? Because Kel Brook's been number five and six in the welterweight division for quite some time now, at least two years at the very least. You broke up just a little bit of the tail end. If the question is, do I think he's going to get the recognition he should get from uh, a great performance, which I, you know what, I failed to put on a great performance that night, and I expect Sean to put on an excellent performance. So, you know, I'm expecting the best tail he's ever been, you know. But uh, what happens after the fight uh, as far as recognition or anything else, that that part of it, is not something that I'm really concerned with. My thing is, um, you know, going out there, doing everything we can, giving it 1,000%, and I know what the outcome is. I've already read this book. I know how it ends. We win. Now, um, you know, I know that Sean, like you said, he's just waking up, so I, I would just direct this question to you because after those videos of the media workout, you've been taking a little – uh, hate from the fans. They feel like the impression that some people took from the video is that you were lashing out and Sean wanted you to stop because he said a few times like, oh, uh, you know, leave it alone, Dad, or something like that. I don't know the exact words that he used uh, at the time that you were mentioning the 10-year, you know, that it took Brooke 10 years to get a title shot. But you and Sean are on the same page, right? Like what you say he believes, he backs you 100%. Because fans are kind of split both ways. They don't know if Sean is on Team Ken Porter and is Ken Porter Team Sean Porter, meaning what he says do you agree with and what you say does he agree with? Well, you know, um, that's Sean. He did say that to me. But, you know, what I would say to him is this, which, you know, anybody and everybody live their life the way they live it, however they live it and whatever they do. If a fight breaks out in a club, my kid is headed the other direction, okay? He's he's leaving. If the fight breaks out in a club and is anywhere near me, I'm ready to roll, okay? And if anybody starts shooting, I'm covering my kid, and I'm taking them bullets, all right? My kid is not that person. He's the guy that's going to want to leave before any of that happens. Now, I want to leave too, but on my way out that door, I'm protecting myself and I'm protecting him. So you can't get it any better than that because you won't want you won't want a guy that's going to be going out there getting in any kind of trouble or jumping at the first thing that happens or losing control or anything like that, you know, in, in, in your son or your athlete or your fighter. And then on the other end, if you got somebody that's going to always protect you no matter what and going to take those bullets for you if they start shooting, that's what you want. That's what he wants. So we believe in each other from that standpoint. His head is cool enough to want not to be in any kind of trouble, and he's never caused me any trouble his entire life. 
and my head is also cool enough but hot enough to know, you know what, I can't get away from this trouble. i got to protect us, and that's what has to happen. So uh, he told his older brother told me one time, he said, I was talking to God, I was praying, and God told me, I didn't give you the father you wanted, I gave you the father you needed. So that's what they have. Well, Ken, as always, you know, the Boxing Boys appreciates your time and also uh, can, wants to continue to follow you and your son's career. And uh, we wish you the best tomorrow night. And uh, we'll be waiting and expecting you to do that victory lap on the Boxing Boys. Thank you. Thank you. Please give us a call. We will be there. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> The Boxing Voice.